Hutt Valley High School. Founded in 1926. And looking around, well, it's a bit of a shambles. It's almost as if this site said to the world, we'll take whatever buildings you've got, as long as they're cheap and transient. And the result is a mishmash of conflicting styles, purposes and possibilities. And yet, and yet. We kind of love it. Because in the end, it's a home of sorts. To, to all, all of us. us. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Memorial <laughs> 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 Tonight I am feeling for you Under the shade of a strange land you have sacrificed much to be here Therefore the graces I offer my hand So welcome home See I made a space for you now Welcome home From the bottom of our of New Zealand and um, we have a really neat diversity and uh, usually it travels as diversity. The thing I really like is in summer when you wander around the field on duty and you see kids of different ethnicities wandering around arm in arm and 
to me that's an image of what society should be. My way. You are the Modi, Matt. You are the Modi. Yeah, I, I know. I've had, had quite a busy life. I, I left school not knowing what I really wanted to do. Um, so I went and did training courses in a marae based scheme. And from there, I ended up in my first full time job because the instructors were like, You're wasting your time here, but you need to go somewhere where you're going to actually, you know, this is not for you. So I ended up in a warehouse with windscreens. From there, became a glazer putting windscreens in cars. And these are all things that I just fell into without actually pursuing. I think the great thing was COVID came in right at the time of Ramadan. Mm. So that's when we have to fast and we do a lot of, it's more morally obligated to be praying. Now, if it was a regular year, we would be fasting throughout the school day. And, um, you know, you would feel kind of bad if you missed out on your prayer because that's kind of what you're supposed to do. It's like a month of trying to be a better person basically, and you're missing out on prayers. And it's kind of like, well, you've done something stupid. <laughs> That's kind of the feeling you get out of it. But um, I think the fact that COVID came along when we were in the middle of Ramadan, like it was just coming up and it was perfect time to just stay at home and be able to do it all. Yeah, at the beginning of high school, so year nine, I knew nothing about Te Ao Māori, I knew nothing about Tikanga Māori. Um, I didn't even know my own iwi until I was 12 um, because I'd been so sheltered from that. Um, the school has helped me through that with coming to Kapahaka, being at Kapahaka, having a marae especially and having people coming in and out of school and you know staying here at school, having those kaiko who able to help us find that. Um, How I would describe my identity. Oh yeah, I like to be um, identified as a Kiwi Tamil. Yeah, because I speak Tamil at home and that's what I identify myself as the most, Tamil. And then, um, and that's what my fam family likes to identify themselves with as well. And then I was obviously born and brought up here. So I've been um, Kiwi my whole life. Like, and obviously <laughs> walking down the streets or something, people don't look at you as, I mean, look at me as a New Zealander just because of the way I look. But um, deep down, I've, I've, I've lived here my whole life. I am a New Zealander. So I grew up in Sri Lanka and with my family and my grandmother and grandfather and I came here like two years ago yeah. and my uncle sponsored us here, he and with my family. Uh, I was grow up in Afghanistan and in uh, Ghazni, I was born in Ghazni and I'm Hazara, yeah. And it's named called Baunia and it's a beautiful town, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember it and then I cry a lot because I had a lot of friends there and then my school, my like community and then my family and yeah and then I said finally and then I said okay. Yeah. They they both they, they told me that we are coming to this land. And then my uncle also called me on phone and he also said asked me are you happy to come here? <laughs> and I said, yeah, kind of. 
uh, first it was the language and it was English and then they talked too fast <laughs> and then and the school was really big and I didn't find where should I go and then it was yeah I'm gonna miss my friends <laughs> and then my grandmother and grandfather and my relatives so yeah I think every country have two sides, one is like the bad side, one is the good side, and then Afghanistan is also like that. The good side is like their mountains, their their pupil, their everything, I think, I just love them with, but the bad side is that touring people, killing people, like, and cutting their head by Taliban and Daesh, and it was a few days, a few months ago, a uh, Taliban attack to the uh, hospital and then they killed the newborn babies. And yeah, that's the best. You miss her, you want to go home. Seventh Street, seven is a prime number, atomic number of nitrogen, small sum of a rectangular pillow, but not constructible by straight into the compass. Oh, here it is. Sorry. Definitely acting in drama, definitely. Like, also English, but most importantly, performing. I felt um, quite lost in my identity for a really long time and confused and da always doubting myself. It was just nice to go somewhere where I could be educated on stuff like that and not have to feel like I needed necessarily a label at the time or needed to like have a cert be a certain standard of whatever to be this because it's like oh I like women what have you ever kissed a girl you know <laughs> it's like a there's a thing about that I guess how did you know but no one asks those kinds of questions in QSA not really it's just a different type of diversity and a lot of a lot of people in like the LGBTQ plus Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Uh, community ha are still very marginalised in terms of like healthcare and global perception and perception in this country, which is still quite conservative, despite what a lot of people might th might tell you or think. I think that because the ignorance that I would probably more likely um, experience is the ignorance towards my religion, not uh, really yeah, my culture, yeah, yeah. because most people like to assume right off the bat that I'm Indian. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't blame them because, you know, it's you're one of two things if you're <laughs> of, of this color with this kind of hair. You can, you can be only one of two things. <laughs> in year three, I was sitting a test in class and so they have the options you tick for your um, ethnicity and there was obviously New Zealand, European, Maori. Um, and so on. And then I saw Indian and Asian, and then I was like to the teacher, oh, I'm Sri Lankan, which one do I tick? And she was like, oh, just tick Indian. And I was like, okay, I just did it. And then I saw this when I was going through my um, old like tests and stuff from primary, and I was like, oh, I ticked Indian, and then it came to my mind, and I was like, wow, she really made me do that, <laughs> yeah. But it has happened to me a lot as well. I go on the bus and the bus driver would say, hey, Michal, and I'd be like, cool. And like people, would, um, teachers uh, sometimes would like, mm, I don't think it's happened here, but there was a reliever back in my old school and she um, she looked at the role, she looked at me and I said hi and she was like, hey, Michal, I went to China once, it was super cool. <laughs> I didn't tell her I was Vietnamese, but <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, or did I? There is 100% obviously for everyone there's situations that you find yourself in that are there are times where you feel you either want to block that out and not you know own that or you can actually step up and go yep that's actually me and I try as much as I can to own it and I do I feel like I do with my friends now I'm just completely like yep yep I'm Jesus whatever you want to say yep that's me. As we've gone through the years, uh, we've been much more about that kind of message, about um, learning to be a good society 
learning to look after each other, uh, with all accepting that there's human frailties, and you know, we'll always get derailed in that because we're human. But if we have an awareness of that and the ability to say sorry uh, and try to fix things, then uh, if that becomes something that we spread out as a school into our surroundings and it goes sort of web-like wider and wider and then it becomes multi-generational as our students have families and time and inculcate the same values, um, we create a pretty cool society that can run as a counter in many ways to a lot of the human nastiness, I suppose, that we see reported in the news so often. Um, so to me, a school is an energising force of good where that's our future as human beings. Is, 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 you know, it's, it's wrapped up in how we learn those lessons and the kind of society we build um, can energise a wider humanity in the future. That's why I think state education is so important. <laughs> Being in like a dance crew and like in the dance atmosphere is kind of like different to like everything else elsewhere. It's like, I don't know, like just being around other dancers and like other people who like share the same interests in dance and stuff. It's just like this atmosphere and it's just, I don't know, it just makes me feel so happy. And that's why I love going to dance comps. That's why I love coming here to like, you know, for my trainings, for my dance crew. There's just something about it that's so like, I don't know, it just like hooked me in and so I just can't stop coming back to it, yeah. Uh, sport is 100% a massive, uh, well for, for, I don't know how many people in a school, but for so many people it's common ground, like it's why we all hang out as friends, it's what makes our friend group our friend group is football or just any sport really. Um, so yes, 100% it has characterised what makes us friends. Um, from there, obviously, you can become a bit closer, but 100% uh, sport has a massive role, definitely, in high schools for, for that. We went. I think he no. kind of disliked me when I started coming to him. I, 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 <laughs> I didn't like him. I didn't um, like him at the beginning. Yeah, actually, no, I've been friends since I moved here. We started being friends in cooking class. Oh. That was a really nice class to have together. Oh, yeah. 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 I, think that, I think the only time I became friends with Ashley is when um, we both got broken up with, I'm pretty sure. And we started talking. <laughs> I think that's the one time that I actually like, became friends with Ashley. And yeah. yeah. And yeah. then Cohen and I started being friends in drama class when. I moved here and then I was with Lutza and then she introduced me to Cohen and then we kind of started being friends since then. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure Connor hated me when I moved here. Cause no, because I'm in Cohen in year nine because um, we like we had this little class we hung out in and then his friend group came and joined our like classroom here, like hung out in so it was like a big group. And yeah, he was like a little scarf with like oh, great <laughs> uniform and like a tie. It wasn't his best look. <laughs> so it's a bit better now. I thought it would be hard, but in, in this country it's really easy because they're all really friendly and uh, they talk to me really nicely. They help me to find classes, you know, so, and I have really nice friends. I have really nice friends. It's really, it's really calming to be here. Um, everyone's, it is a very diverse school. Everyone's really accepting and, um, yeah, you meet lots of really cool people and just people who share the same interests as you, people who are willing to like talk to you and like bring you out of your shell and you get people who will challenge you and um, push you and help you grow. For me, I come, I'm in the marae 24-7, I'm down here all the time and that's how I find myself in Te Ao Māori, just being here surrounded by more Māori people, being comfortable with more Māori people, it's something that I think is really important for young Māori who maybe are unsure of where they sit in the world 
or if they don't know their whakapapa and if they are unable to find out as of yet or as of now being with people who know their whakapapa just makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable it makes you feel like you do have a whakapapa because we're all Māori, we all see each other as family. Yeah, we come from different areas, but we all see each other as family. And that's something that I think is really important. It's like our culture to when people come from another country, we're welcoming them and then we cook a lot of food, a lot of Afghani food for them, and then we give them lots of clothes. And yeah, we have lots of delicious food like ashak and yeah, Bolani, something like that. I think a personal favourite of mine would be adult. That is, um, directly translates into, uh, I don't know how to say it. I like it's, well, it'd be wrong to call it a salad because it has noodles in it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but it's kind of this noodle, Thing. noodle dish with um, a side of soup um, which is done with a certain type of uh, mushroom that is not the regular kind, the, the, this kind. Mm -hmm. I'm coming across chilli sauce as one of those things. I've never seen chilli sauce in my life and then once I had I'm like, oh my lord, what, what happens there? So yeah, this is the realities of the world I was in. And yeah. we knew that he was cooking, and we said, well, uh, you know, like, he loves cooking. And Nick Larkin, I think, took them to the big breakfast. Um, mm -hmm. So what did you do today? Can you... Oh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then you see it on Facebook. So, well, hey, mate, how were the hash browns? <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah, classic teenage boy yeah, right yeah, across yeah, the country yeah, as a 14 year old. Right. Yeah, so he's a th he is 14. <laughs> so we can't like, be come on, mate. Right? No. They're going to be putting a slave in their guts out for it. What a recognition <laughs> wouldn't go on this. Yeah. Ungrateful teenager. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so ultimately when I left school, I, um, I had a Weird reason, in many ways. One that I'd had a huge bust up with my dad. Oh, this was the uh, Vietnam War era, and I told dad my views, and he didn't agree with them. <laughs> and it, it deteriorated as a conversation, come argument, to the point where it was, you know, um, if you think you know everything, why don't you leave home? So, sure, I will. You know, so off I went. And so I was actually flatting uh, while I was still at high school uh, for a wee while. It's not a viable way to live, really. <laughs> um, but in the process, in that, uh, that's, uh, this is what was now form, uh, then Form 7. In English, we did Crime and Punishment. And uh, that blew my little brain apart. Well, my hopes and dreams for next year, next year was supposed to be like, I wanted to go to Otago University, and I wanted to study like medicine and all that stuff. And then, like, you know, one day in my future, become an anesthesiast. But after like the lockdown all those like and my motivation like you know dying and not coming to school anymore it's kind of just like that dream died along with it but I guess for next year I just want to be happy and like you know comfortable and yeah but I don't know what next year holds for me. I had a really large family as in my mum's one of 14 brothers and sisters, she's, mom, she's Māori, and so I had lots of cousins, and they were all workers, they were all in potential like factory type, type jobs or manual labour type jobs, and so yeah, the ideals and the impressions of seeing something that was more than just work and labour wasn't quite there, they were all just a bit more romantic dreams. My dad doesn't feel good because he was a, he's a photographer and he did like he had a studio in our country but here he's doing uber taxi so he doesn't feel he wish he could go back to it. but sometimes he'll he's okay with it he like he makes like websites and now he's doing okay i thought wow there's all this literature out there that i need to leave school and read it so uh, my initial incarnation um, was that I would work three months, buy a whole bunch of books while I was working, then take three months off 
read the books. Then get another job, you know, read for three months, because my theory at the time was you don't need all this money that, you know, what do you, what do you use that for? And you could be reading. You know? So I went through that phase for a while. On the side, I was racing motorbikes. So it must have been a strange sort of unit, really. Um, but then the, uh, that was all fine, and ultimately I had a job as a Venetian blind installer, and I used to love it. You'd go around people's places and yak away, da da da, you know. Um, if there's a possibility, like if there's some way that I could possibly get back on track to that dream, then I would take it definitely. Uh, when I left school, I hitchhiked around the country um, for a few weeks and um, read some books and stuff. And anyway, went and visited Mrs. Archer, who was absolutely delighted to receive a visit from this long haired, probably smelly uh, unit, you know, <laughs> rocking up on her doorstep several years after she'd last seen me. You know, uh, but she was special. She, she was certainly a teacher who uh, inspired an interest. Uh, as a as a young woman, she'd uh, gone on OE, the old version though, where you take a ship around the world kind of thing, you know. And she'd stopped in Egypt, and so she had various mementos that she'd bring into school, and she'd fire us with a, an interest in um, everything that wasn't New Zealand, really. But I don't mean by that that she excluded New Zealand. Yeah, you know, she was. Um, yeah, she was a lovely teacher. She was the the full definition of a teacher who. Um, you know, loves her students and loves ideas and packaged it all up in a way that made you really, really loyal to her. You know, she was special. So I had, as you do, I think we all grow with dreams. And as a teenager, I used to, and, I, and this is from in hindsight now reflection, I used to um, throw it out there flippantly that oh, I'm going to be a psychologist one day. You know, this is my ideals. Um, and so that was in the back of my mind as a teenager and I couldn't even look back to say why I would make it up with um, you know, justifying it to myself by saying because I get to mess with people's heads um, and so now upon reflection as a teacher I think I didn't, just didn't understand because school wasn't that uh, I wasn't that passionate about school I think the statement of being a psychologist was an easier statement than saying I'm going to be a teacher who at that time was conflict so being a teacher now, I feel I've reached who I was, you know, wanting to be as a teenager. Saying that I wanted to be a psychologist, like I actually wanted to be a teacher because of that nature of connection to people that makes a proper change in the world. Yeah, and why the diverse connections? We don't have the narrow-minded, or not narrow, narrow field of connections in a teaching field. We've got such a wide pool and it's not that we choose it, it's just that's what's given to us. And, and that's the beauty of being a teacher. Because I think for a while, Māori weren't proud of who they were. A lot of things on the news, a lot of things through social media it was, oh, this and this is not something to be proud of. And obviously there aren't things to be proud of. But as a culture, if you can improve yourself and you can improve the people around you through uplifting, through positivity, through mana, that's something that I'm very proud of, to be able to see. It's, it happens all the time down here. We have our kaiopo, Matua Dero Matua Paura. We've got Fire Live, Fire Laws, Fire Paddy, who they all help us out so much and so greatly. And it's something that I'm so thankful for. But my motivation at the time was around uh, the bright kids. Uh, and my mission, really, was to see what I could do with um, students who had a good intellect, you know, um, how could you make that flower? Mm. And uh, so they went through school not just being good because they were smart, but go through school discovering that if you apply your intelligence, you can um, explore all manner of creative directions. Um, you travel a long path, you know, and uh, by the time I was a deputy principal at um, Burnside in Christchurch, I had shifted quite significantly in terms of why I was involved with schools. Uh, 
like uh, one day we was just walking to the street and then it was uh, and then when we came back a few uh, minutes later uh, the that the road exploded and then if we were there and then we would finish it and then one uh, again it was we was in the bus and then we just come out of the bus and then the bus go and then the dog explode that bus wow. yeah and then yeah we yeah. don't understand that culture is literally anything and everything it's what you get up to every day is culture it's not just about your religion or your race or your ethnicity and it's who you identify yourself as and i just if i could help people understand that that's what culture is and to celebrate diversity in our school then i would be quite proud of myself and we are working towards that i know Leroy and i are working towards that i think it's up to you like if you be friendly to them and then they will be friendly to you if you just say that no i'm not like them i'm just like i'm muslim or i'm my skin color is like change and then they will not talk to you and then i think yeah you should just go with them and then talk to them yeah i got an email this morning from vibe the local support agency talking about two of our year 13 students who were at the local skate park last night ran into a, a boy from Wellington who had been they think kicked out of home they weren't quite sure they'd taken him ultimately to Vibe and waited while they had the conversations at Vibe connected with the police that this this boy is you know he's been out of his home for a couple of days and so the message was what wonderful students you've got you know. I think when adults well, I think when you become an adult, you question what you think way less. So whatever you've learned up until that point just sort of cements and that you don't really easily let go of it, which sucks when things change around you and you can't cope as well with them and you just sort of reject them. I, don't, I haven't been rejected myself, but I do witness it. And I think in... I think in this country you don't as much get kicked out for being gay, but you certainly don't. I'm mean, not to say that it never happens, but you don't hear about it a whole lot. But I don't think you, um, I don't think you get treated very well sometimes, and people make a lot of assumptions and people make a lot of judgments based on absolutely nothing, even if they've known you for your entire life. <sighs> The thing is, I have so much. Not all of us are bombers, first off. Um, I know that the whole thing of what happened in America totally painted us a new colour of what we were. So, um, you know, seeing that, you know, when people go, oh, don't blow up the school, it's, um, it's kind of like, oh, okay, I'm not badly in hurt by that, but like getting that from when I was younger, for example, and people would be like, "Oh, you don't, you, you're gonna kill me." I was just kind of like that fear that they have that, but I know it's joking, but like somehow it doesn't feel like it. Like my church, for example, isn't based on all that crap. It's it's based on love and and support, and and I think. Yes, in a way, Christianity, the way I see it, is not the way I see a lot of Christians who call themselves Christians living it out and hugely, um, yes, a lot of people think that Christianity is really not what it is from my point of view, from my, you know, what I think is right. Um, and that definitely, uh, it can be frustrating because it's like, no, I don't hate gays. Do other people be normal? Yeah, no, um, I can swear. I still feel different, but it's not as um, central to my experience, I guess, because it feels like everyone is different in some way. And I can finally see that or be in an environment where not, every, where not everyone is like suppressing huge parts of themselves or huge feelings about themselves because they actually 
know themselves better than when they were a little kid, I guess. I also feel like I've become less annoying. But it's very true when people say history is written by the victors, because it is. And that's not always the best thing, especially when it comes to colonisation. And and that I think one of the first things we can start with for biculturalism is through education. We People need to be educated on stuff because if they're not, they're walking around blindly stating facts that either aren't true or are just completely and hor horrifically racist and ignorant. Well, everyone's ideology of Islam being this very violent religion because of of what happened and their own thoughts of what a perfect world should look like, it's, I think, completely wrong. Because you're letting a small minority of people who believe that count for the over a million people who believe that it's not. It's love and compassion. It's um, so being able to wear a hijab and not be told you shouldn't be. You can't, you just cannot. And things like, well, you know, you go on to be like, bigger things in life as well. I mean, like, it's kind of disheartening, you know? Yeah, I don't know, you know, uh, about the fifth or sixth time of going to see the paediatrician <laughs> and, and just getting nothing from him, I said, come on, what is wrong with my son, you know, and I've, I've thought about that a lot ever since, because I kind of looked him in the eye and thought, come on mate, do your job, and actually, there's nothing wrong with my son, you know, and he... He obviously was fla floundering around trying to find a diagnosis or something. <laughs> it must be something in a book here somewhere. <laughs> um, but there's that word difference, you know, and, and we are all different from each other and Max's difference is, is the way that he is and it's the same as everybody else. It's just he kind of works in a different way. In our mosques, we, we learn the Quran. Mm. We read it. We If we get the chance, the... The um, sheikhs at the um, mosque will, you know, unpack the words of the Quran, and every every line that it all outlines uh, the Prophet's life. And the Prophet, um, he he went through a lot. Of, he had so much of a big story, but through every passage of the Quran, he talks about everything he outlines the laws he's got all of the way you should act as a person and to be a good person really and no matter what religion where you're from whether you not believe in God or anything you you've got to have that sort of core that you shouldn't be treating people in a sense that they're lesser than you. Because if you peel back the skin, we're all the same. We're flesh and bone. And unfortunately, no one sees each other as equals. And that's the thing about Islam. It's worldwide. And the oppression... God, I pray that they end the oppression soon. And those people in those countries have that freedom. Tonight I am feeling for you Under the state of a strange land 
You have sacrificed much to be here. Therefore, the graces I offer my hand so. Welcome home. See, I made a space for you now. Welcome home From the bottom of our hearts Welcome home From the bottom of our Most of us here with our hearts wide open Hide it on a mind, hide it on a mind, hide it on a mind, oh my heart and I From the bottom of our hearts 